sneaker culture in the NBA is probably at an all-time high. I'm going to say that because yeah. more, more players nowadays have signature shoe deals, and there's a difference uh, between signature shoe deal and just having a shoe deal. Right. Uh, for one, a lot of players are signed to Nike, Adidas, uh, Jordan brand, which is a subsidiary of Nike anyway, but they don't have their own shoe. And then even more interesting, I find, when it comes to the NBA shoe deals, uh, is the ones who don't will lobby themselves. Like, for one of the players we'll get to later only wears Nikes, right. which means, like, you would think that you're trying to gain attention from them or even competitors to get your own shoe deal. Uh, the list of players who have their own signature shoe is obviously uh, pretty big with almost 30 players in the last, I think, 10 years. Even Rajon Rondo, which I found amazing. Rajon. At one point. Is it Rajon? Is it Ray? I always said Rajon, but it I could have been, right? been wrong. I, I, I never really checked. I wasn't, I wasn't talking to him, so I'm sure he wouldn't care that I, how I say his name because he doesn't hear what I say. You don't know that. Kevin Durant once did, so you got to be <laughs> careful. So let's see what Kevin Durant wrote. Who are these clowns at TYT Sports? Anybody know? Uh, but in terms, Paul George was the last to get a signature shoe, and that came out pretty recently. But uh, in terms of guys who deserve it going forward, a couple of Sports Illustrated's uh, ideas for them was uh, Porzingis on Tentacumpo. John Wall has had three deals, I believe, and two signature shoes, but he's still a free agent when it comes to the shoe market. Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, and believe it or not, Nick Young because of his fashion sense. Right. JR, I could be wrong here. I've never thought big men could sell shoes. But True. I think that, and I'm a Knicks fan, I don't think I'd buy the Porzingis shoe regardless of what it looked like. And even on Tentacumbo, unless you called them freaks. So that's, oh, yeah. Such a good name. Exactly, man. No, these, there's characteristics behind what I think would work. And there's also the vision right. behind what you'd have as a basketball shoe that you're going to play with and a, a shoe Style that you cross over and you wear it. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, you got like the, uh, what are they called? You got the, the, the Yeezys, oh, the right? The Yeezy, the Hyper Boost, which are really yeah. comfortable. And they look Yeezy weird, doesn't play basketball. Yeezy doesn't um, you don't, walk. Uh, so you don't know that. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, at least, he at least floats. Not, not he for floats around. Culture. It's not like those. These are the most comfortable walking shoes I've ever had in my life. You know, it's like those sketcher commercials where they have old school athletes walk around and say, look, this is the best shoe of my life because my foot's falling apart because I'm 50 years old. <laughs> anyway, it's not like that. It's, it's just like for some reason everyone decided to buy Yeezy's shoe because something else goes into the equation, right? There's a character thing. When you wear it and go, you know, these are Yeezys. I'm rocking what you guys like in this character. So it's the reason why I agree with the Nick Young thing. But there's aspects. There's a character and also the name of the shoe off of your name as you mentioned, the freak. Yeah. There's something you can do, off of that. So like with Porzingas, like I think they call them like the peas or some shit. What are they? The, the you use? could call. Them, I mean, there's there's his nickname. You got Godzingus. You got Porzingod. But I, Zinger, I think, is such a call it the Zing one. <laughs> so anyway, this is the thing. You have to come up with a good name. That's it has to catch. I mean, the Yeezys. That's really the reason people buy them. It's because they're called Yeezys. Well, that, they're called the Kanye. That and, and like, because okay. Kanye is half designing them and his name is attached to it, and he's got a rabid fan base, so people would buy it for that. Uh, I agree with you on the shoe name, though. Like for example, LeBron's like there's they're called like the Soldier One, Soldier Twos. Mm -hmm. Soldier's a good name. It obviously fits LeBron. He kind of feels like that. He mm -hmm. seems like a like an army. And he grunt. had that logo, the LB crown thing. Yeah. I don't know if he still uses that. I remember when he first got it. Well, what's interesting YouTube. with LeBron is because, again, when I go back to the idea that like big men don't usually sell shoes, like people like Patrick Ewing and Shaq had their own shoe deals, uh -huh. but they didn't sell that well because usually guards sell shoes. If you think about it, Jordan and, and Kobe, not just because of their prominence and how many championships they won, like it had to do with the fact that you wanted to score like those guys. Exactly. And not a lot of you people pay attention my, to the shooting guards. I don't know how many people, even the big men I played with in high school, or people who were growing up at that age. I don't think they're going like I want to score like Ewing. <laughs> but there was the Ewings, right? As you of said, course. the Ewings and, Shaqs. and the Shaqs. Yeah, how had a shoe deal. Yeah, but the thing is, who made those shoes? What was the shoe company behind those? Nobody. Fuck if I know. Right? <laughs> Shaqs were sold, and I think in in. Payless, maybe, or something like that. They were. He used to do the commercial for Payless. Yes, they were, yeah. they were low-end shoes. That's why those didn't work out. You have to sell really expensive, overpriced, bullshit shoes in order to make it in this business. Mm -hmm. So they went the wrong direction. I think also um, um, uh, Marbury, Starberry. Well, so Starberry. He made a point to have cheap shoes. Yes, yeah, so you're going to okay, mention Affordable, that. I'm sorry. I was going to say, well, no, he was like a $35 shoe, I think it was, which I thought was actually pretty cool. Absolutely. Because if you wanted a good basketball shoe, I always share the story. There's an amazing documentary on uh, ESPN, which is a short, 30 for 30 short, on Serge Ibaka, mm -hmm. the son of Congo, I think it's called, where he came over from 
Congo and he, you know, played in the United States. And the, they have, like, footage of him, I think if I remember, or at least him telling the story of the first time he stepped into a gym in America to play basketball and somebody offered him shoes because he grew up playing basketball without them. And he said it felt like he could fly. So <laughs> that, and think about that difference. If yeah. you're used to playing barefoot on some kind of concrete in you know extreme heat, and then you come into an air conditioned building and you put on maybe a pair of Jordans or a pair of Kobe's or anything, you probably do feel like you could fly. Although I think it would have been even better if Serge Ibaka was like, and of course I wanted the Patrick Ewings. <laughs> <laughs> which leads to my other aspect of this, and which I never knew why it didn't go this direction. Why don't we pay more homage to the old school guys who had to play in? Uh, the original Chuck the Taylors. Chucks. I mean, Dr. J. I, they may have done a Dr. J. I well, but, well, think of. I mean, the, the Chuck Taylors are still like probably the most true, one of the five most popular. Don't shoes. play ball in them. No, your your ankles will snap in half. Exactly. So the <laughs> fact that they went through that, and also the 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 the, um, the nature of the floors has evolved. Yes. The floors you play. So these guys, also guys, which we like to exalt so much. I mean, give them, throw them a bone, drop them a couple million dollars for their name on a shoe, a nice new shoe I would, that uh, actually does something. That's an awesome idea. You should, we should go, we should go, I'm going to take your idea. You should go to Nike or go to uh, mm -hmm. any of them, Adidas, and say, like, why don't you get, you know, Bill Russell and Dr. J and a couple of the other, and Dominique. The Jerry together. West Twos. And call, yeah. And the J Dubs. Legendary collection or something <laughs> like that. And you have yourself <laughs> legendary shooting. And everyone's just like, no, we'll just go with Black Chucks. You know we'll why? Go because, with that. You know, because these young kids these days don't know who any of these players all are. No, of course They're like, not. They think the old school guys are Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. They probably don't know who Scottie Pippen was, I guarantee. A significant percentage of 13-year-olds are like, think, Pippen? Who do you play with? They think Michael Jordan's a meme. <laughs> they think he's a meme. And one of my saying. favorite memes. Uh, all right, so I, was, I have uh, I have two guys, two guys that I think deserve shoe deals at this point. Not deserve, but I think could sell them really well. Uh, DeRozan, I mentioned before the show, one mm -hmm. of the USC guys. Mm -hmm. And at this point, Isaiah Thomas. You know, AI obviously was able to sell shoes. I thought he had an interesting shoe. It wasn't the greatest looking shoe in the world. He was Reebok, I believe. Yeah. Um, but AI, character. of course, is going to sell shoes just because of that superhuman ability and how small he was. Mm -hmm. But for the same reason Steph Curry sells shoes, because... Most kids grow up now and they go, oh, I don't got to be 6'10". I, I can be Steph Curry. You can be Isaiah Thomas. You can be 5'9". I'm all about 5'10". And get to the so run. Isaiah Thomas is on your list, you said, right? I think Isaiah Thomas and DeMar DeRozan. Mm -hmm. And I say that because DeMar DeRozan right now, uh, he currently rocks Kobe's all the time. Uh, and his game is similar. So mm -hmm. Nike should be sitting there going like, well, we can probably make even just signature collections within Kobe's brand for DeRozan. Those are the Kobe 9s, which DeRozan had a fan made. Which I think oh. this is really cool. So DeRozan will take fan suggestions and colorways and then wear them in games and then sign them and give them back to fans. These are things. That's, that's cool. what I'm saying. So the, it goes from your character and then how you can transition over right. to fans wanting to buy it. Things like that, you have this advantage now. We got Instagram and Twitter of course. And, and Snapchat and all these things. Snap they face. connect to fans and actually make the fans feel like they're connected to you directly, which they are. And then you can make shoes based off of what they want and what they've suggested, and they're going to buy those. Of animals, course, if, especially if a fan or fans, for the most part, can vote on it. Like, uh, for example, if you're a Golden State Warriors fan, mm -hmm. you're probably the one that's buying the Steph, the original Steph Curry ones from Under Armour, not the dad shoes, but the ones that are uh, gold, blue, and white. They're right. based off the color. So if you're Raptors fans, you get like a, and I think this extends outward, uh, if the, the a purple, black, and gold, like Kobe 11 Kobe's, shoe would yeah. sell like wildfire, especially if it's the Raptors collection, especially when you're DeMar DeRozan, you can work with Drake because he's a Raptors fan. He's a big NBA fan, but he's a Raptors fan. Like, you're, you're talking about a huge potential there. So, you know, I'm happy to take 10% for the idea, and we'll move forward. So but, what uh, we've discovered, you got? Um, well, actually, it's crazy. My two were Nick Young and Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah I didn't know Thomas. he had Isaiah Thomas, but totally, he's one of those guys. He's a scorer. He's broken out. This, you mm. have to strike while the iron is hot, yes. right? And I'm not saying that this is going to be his only breakout year or this level but of production. But if you do it now, you'll sell for years Right now, because again, it's a, I think there's a petty market for getting in. Once you're in, people stop caring whether or not you're supposed to be there or not. They just go, oh, that's too, it's, it's, the, it's the KD7? Fine, let's do it. What are they, KD9s? So I tried on a pair of KD. I, I love basketball shoes, um, and I'm going through a Jordan phase. I only have Jordans at this moment. But I tried on the KD's shoes, the, the KD, and amazingly, my, my knee got injured in about five seconds. Oh, okay. you played ball on them? No, I tried them on, and I thought they were one of the most uncomfortable shoes I've ever put on in my life. Yeah. I think they're awesome looking. I think they're some of the coolest looking KD9s. I thought they were some of the coolest basketball shoes you can buy. They are beyond uncomfortable. It feels like a sock is choking your foot. 
You wonder if they've, again, if they've designed some of these for just walking down the street or for playing ball. Because sometimes his, they forget these are basketball players his, you're naming your shoes after. His are, his are for playing ball. Uh, I say that because I actually watched a video where I forgot who was interviewing KD, but he's explaining that the toe is split. Like, not split, actually, but there's like a slit. So and they ask why, and he goes, well, I'm, I'm weird. When I, when I shoot and I play, I play on my toes. I play pigeon-toed, which a lot of players don't. So, like, if you're wearing KD shoes to actually play basketball and you're trying to play like KD, you should have a game, I guess, similar where you're trying to model it after. If you're just wearing them because they're basketball shoes and KD has them, they're probably not built for your foot. Yeah. Because he's got some alien-ass foot. <laughs> like, his arms and limbs, they're fucking 13 <laughs> feet long and maybe, like, half an inch wide. Be careful it's, to say about KD. Careful. He's going to respond. He might. Look. I don't. I like his tattoos. You guys have the problem with the tattoos. <laughs> it's weird. I was the only one who said, <laughs> "Were you let the, the man live? Yeah, live and let live." It was Jenk and Anna who were sitting there and being like, yeah. "It was a dumb tattoo." It's like, what the fuck? Are you no, doing? but I think so. I was, also, uh, when you talk about bad, I don't want to call them bad shoes, but for playing ball, I, I had I <laughs> bought a pair of the the Kobe's a while ago. I I love because I'm not a sneakerhead, so they're the Kobe. 2.7s. I don't know. <laughs> so the thing is, I played ball on them the first time. Turned my ankle because they're tennis shoes. They're oh, they have, you're and they said, the ones oh, with you, the, and then so then I was like, okay, maybe lock. I did something wrong, and I continued to play it. Turned my other ankle. I said, this does not happen to me. It no depends. More. It really does with the shoe culture. It really just depends on your foot. Like I have like the ball of my ankle or ball of my foot, whatever you want to call it, is low. So like the Kobe's I could wear, and I think they're more comfortable than anything that's really high top because like it's not. I have a weird. Everyone's got weird. He's feet. not a jumper. Feet are weird. I I'm also by, not good I at basketball. Gym. So anyway, <laughs> the thing is, is, so they told me it said the ball of the Kobe's is bigger, so it gives you more planted foot thing. Then someone else told me, oh, when you buy the Kobe's, you have to buy ankle support because you know what those shoes are? They don't have ankle support because they're not basketball shoes. What size foot are you? Eleven. Okay, we have the same size foot. I would say anybody with like a fourteen should just go buy LeBrons because those are like tank shoes. Yeah. But they're heavy they're shoes. Heavy. That's the thing. So that's why I think it makes sense, though, for LeBron, because LeBron should have a tank shoe, because look at the man, he's a fucking tank. Absolutely. So I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, just be careful what you buy and you think you're going to play ball in, because you probably can't in many of these shoes. I mean, I put on Kobe's and I shoot, you know, 30%. The Steph Curry dad shoes, I bet you can ball. <laughs> the tennis, the actual tennis shoes. You can also golf in them. You can also, you can also clean your bedroom. You can also uh, get a job at a hospital in them. You can work at Walmart. You can do a lot of things. You can get a job, at, the, get a job at the hospital. Everyone, and everyone who's, who's had to work from the ground up like I did, everyone's had the dishwasher or, or busboy job. The, uh, the, the Reebok Classic Black. Non yeah. non marking sole shoes. Yeah. Those are the the dishwasher special. My brother and I used to call it. Yeah, that's, I had a, I had a pair of. Except were, you don't buy them Reeboks. They were too expensive. You I had Kalex. I had black Skechers, and I was a waiter, and I was a busboy before I was you, a waiter. I was a busboy when I was like fourteen years old. You wasted Skechers, expensive ass Skechers, on a waiter job. Skechers, they were like thirty bucks. No, that's too expensive for a sixteen year old kid who didn't have shit. I was fourteen when I started you gotta, working. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta 14. go to Payless and pay ten bucks. Fourteen years old. I didn't. They wouldn't let me use. I couldn't legally do it because I had to get working papers. So they said, like, what does pay under the table? I said, that sounds better. <laughs> Take my money. Under the table, not paying taxes. Trump's America. Yes. She doesn't have to release his tax returns. Neither do I. Comment below, like, favorite, subscribe. Who deserves the next signature shoe deal? I think it will might be Isaiah Thomas based off this season. J.R. Jackson deserves the next shoe deal. The JJ ones. Go. It's not bad. Thank you.